Hey, uh, my name is Daniel. Uh, I'm the founder and uh, CEO of Loopring. Today, I'm not going to talk about uh, technical details, uh, but I want to describe uh, two features that we are uh, very excited about uh, in our uh, wallet as well as on our layer two. So the first one is the counterfactual wallet. So first of all, for those of you who don't know uh, much about smart uh, wallet, uh, a smart wallet is actually a smart contract based. So each wallet is a smart contract. Uh, it features some very nice properties. So one of them is that uh, uh, the private keys are decoupled from the address or the identity of your wallet. So that uh, you know, once, uh, if the private key got leaked, you can uh, you know, swap the private key with a new one and then the wallet will uh, become uh, secure again. Uh, the other nice property is that uh, uh, the state of the wallet is uh, decoupled from the logic uh, because every smart wallet is behind a proxy. We can upgrade the, uh, the logic behind the proxy and keep the state. So uh, this we achieve uh, upgradability. Uh, one of the uh, nice and well-known feature of smart wallet is the social recovery. Um, compared to EOA wallet, uh, where people have to uh, try uh, use best practice to keep a secret to make sure their, their wallet are secure. Uh, with social recovery, you, uh, you can just pick up the red social network uh, and use them as your guardians to secure your wallet. Um, we have been you know, uh, marketing for our smart wallet solution for a while, but a, a big challenge is that uh, uh, deploying the wallet costs a lot of money. So right now on Ethereum mainnet, uh, each wallet will cost about 650K gas, which translates to you know, about $100 sometimes. Uh, this is a huge barrier for our massive uh, adoption. So the idea now for us is that uh, we want to allow people to try smart wallet before they pay uh, for the wallet creation. So how can we do that? Uh, we delay the wallet uh, uh, creation uh, to a later time. So we, we call this uh, undeployed wallet, a counterfactual wallet. So once people feel like they like the wallet, uh, they want to uh, pay for the, for the creation, for the deployment, they can do it manually. Or they can you know, predefine some rules. Uh, for example, if the total asset in their wallet uh, exceeds a threshold, then we can uh, help them to uh, deploy the wallet and then charge a, a fee. So under the hood, a smart wallet address uh, is created with um, you know, its internal states, uh, their uh, initial owners, their initial guardian network, uh, their modules, et cetera. Uh, so when we uh, do some, you know, uh, let, for example, if for, for signature verification, we can delegate uh, to another contract. And then we can just use uh, the states data provided and uh, you know, recalculate the address to make sure they match. So what we can do and we, what we can't do with a counterfactual uh, wallet. So first of all, it's a normal Ethereum address. So you can receive uh, tokens uh, either on layer one without any problem. Uh, the, Counterfactual wallet will be activated on Loopring layer two. So it's fully functional on Loopring layer two. And other layer tools can also respect the rules uh, in calculating the counterfactual wallet addresses and then support those uh, wallet as well. Uh, interaction with uh, layer one DeFi is also possible uh, with technologies uh, such as our East port where you deposit funds directly to layer two. And when you interact with, for example, Compound, the funds will be trans transferred directly from your layer two uh, to Compound without going through your layer one contract first. But there are some things that you cannot do with a counterfactual wallet. For example, if you transferred uh, a crypto assets into layer one address, then it's there, it, it, it sucks, it, it stucks there. You cannot do anything before you deploy your wallet. And some other nice features uh, for the smart wallet cannot be uh, used. For example, uh, the daily quota, you know, those things 
belongs to layer one, you cannot use those features before the wallet is created. So besides you know, the, this uh, counterfactual wallet feature, uh, we also want to make sure you know, the smart wallet can be deployed on other layer ones or layer twos. So right now we are working uh, with Arbitrum and most of the work has been done. Uh, the next step will be probably working with either Binance Chain or Optimism to make sure you know, the wallet can be deployed there. So uh, in, in other words, our smart wallet will go multi-chain, multi-layer tools. Uh, then there will be another problem. Uh, if you have your wallet on Ethereum midnight and other people's, uh, your, your friend's uh, smart wallet are on other network, then how can you be uh, you know, social guardians of each other? So we have a new cool feature called a network agnostic social recovery, which enables you to uh, add any looping wallets, regardless where uh, their wallets are, have been deployed to. Uh, so uh, we feel like this is a very nice feature, uh, a must to have feature for multi uh, layer two de deployment. Uh, now NFTs, uh, looping now supports NFT three, uh, the, the version 3.9 supports NFT. Uh, so on layer two, you can mint NFTs directly without any interactions uh, on layer one. You can uh, do order based trading on layer two. You can also uh, transfer layer twos. Right now, we support ERC uh, 721 and 1155. Uh, the, the, uh, the cost per transaction on layer one is uh, really small compared to uh, layer one solutions. For example, if we compare the uh, ERC 20 uh, NFT trading, uh, right now with, uh, with Loopring solution will be at least 400 times uh, less expensive uh, than an open sea trade. So we are going to launch uh, the Relier support for NFT trading uh, and minting on uh, Ethereum midnight, uh, maybe next week. Uh, some people ask me a question whether Loopring will launch our own marketplace. Uh, the answer is no, we don't have a plan to uh, launch our own NFT marketplace, but we are working with a premium uh, partner to make sure they can launch their marketplace uh, successfully uh, and very soon, probably in, in Q, Q4 and with a lot of other stuff. Yeah, so that's it. Uh, I don't have uh, other stuff to show. Um, thank you for the invitation and thank you for listening.